Ethereum is actually a security and it should be regulated as such with the proper disclosure of the risks because it's an investment contract. Its decentralization is questionable at best and we see constant changes to it. There is government. And yet I do not see a do no harm regulatory response being put forward by the SEC right now. I see a, a, what I would call a much more uh, aggressive and a, a shut it down before it goes too far. Uh, approach. And I'm, I'm quite frankly disappointed. Now, I, For Ripple, we use this digital asset called XRP to settle, to, to settle liquidity needs between banks. So today there's $27 trillion parked at different banks around the world so they can make payments between each other. Our view is you can use a digital asset like XRP to do that. You take the red pill, you stay in Wonderland, and I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. All I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. If you got a bag, welcome to the party. Welcome back to some more Moon O'Clock News. No breakfast, no coffee, just straight extra, extra bullishness. Shout out to the latest sub, Cynthia Brooks in the building. Appreciate you stopping by. Go ahead, throw on those pilot shades and buckle up because the future is extra, extra bright. And let's go full speed, full throttle into the cryptoverse. We got the total global cryptocurrency market cap today. 1.14 trillion, up about 1% in the past 24 hours. That XRP, 37 and a half cents, up about 1.5 in the past 24. We got BTC right around 23,000. We got ETH, 1700. And we have Stellar XLM in the number 29 spot, right around 12 cents, up about 4.1% in the past 24. Taking a look at the coin fair value, we got XRP, 50 cents. And we got Stellar right around 18 cents. ETH, 2500 bitcoin 44000 ripple says we're going cloud gazing with fintech and the cloud podcast ripple james wallace vp of cbdc's covers several topics including the difference between crypto and cbdc's trends in the cbd space and our cbdc innovate hackathon ripple says as an xrp holder and the biggest xrp holder ripple believes proactive communication and transparency are part of being a responsible stakeholder our quarterly market reports provide the latest news on the state of crypto. Library.com says John Deaton has used a copy of the transcript to summarize the most recent hearing. It's absolutely insane that the only legal way to share this hearing is a paraphrase of a transcript, but evidently that's how the American justice system works. Ripple CBDC Innovate. Digital Pound Foundation says congratulations to our Steer Co members for joining Ripple's CBDC Innovate Challenge. Panel of judges, you know what's coming. I know what's coming and they can't stop it. Ethereum is actually a security and it should be regulated as such with proper disclosure of risk. Ethereum is actually a security and it should be regulated as such with the proper disclosure of the risks because it's an investment contract. Its decentralization is questionable at best and we see constant changes to it. There is governance that's involved with this, the issuance, which is very very different from Bitcoin. Bitcoin is a digital commodity. It has no issuer. It has no governance. It has no CEO, no headquarters. And I think that there will be more clarity. I think that Ethereum will eventually be under the SEC mm -hmm. and Bitcoin will continue to be this digital commodity that gives property rights to 8 billion people on this decentralized global settlement network that's available to all but owned by no one. R3, public and private blockchains are seen as competitive, but they're more complementary than you think. Private platforms like Corda not only extend the benefits of public platforms, but they're also acting as a bridge to trusted interoperability between TradeFi and DeFi, a vision for public and private blockchains. This was right before XRP surged to three bucks, achieving its all-time high. Ripple is revolutionizing the entire financial infrastructure at its core, utilizing on-demand liquidity powered by XRP. Doesn't get any better than this. Listen to Brad Garland House explain just how revolutionary this is from 2017. How big is that problem? How many customers do you have? There's no question there's a lot of hype in this system, and I don't actually think that's a good thing. For Ripple, we use this digital asset called XRP to settle, to, to settle liquidity needs between banks. So today there's $27 trillion parked at different banks around the world so they can make payments between each other. Our view is you can use a digital asset like XRP to do that in real time. Because XRP has been so efficient, it settles a transaction about three seconds compared so to Bitcoin. So it just passes through that currency for that period of time. That's correct. Yeah. Right after XRP began the biggest bull run in crypto history, taking the best performing digital asset of the 2017 bull run, the manipulation, the powers that be came in to stop it and throw a wrench in the game. 
because they know what's coming. We know what's coming. They can't stop it. So they delayed it a little bit so they can shake out the weak hands so they can come in and buy it up cheaper. 516 million XRP moved by Ripple and top tier platforms. Half a billion XRP moved by Ripple and top exchanges. Large amounts of XRP keeps getting moved on the market in large lumps according to Well Alert, crypto service that tracks large crypto transactions between wallets. Massive amounts of XRP on the move. Ripple sent 30 million XRP to Mexico-based crypto unicorn Bitso. This exchange is the largest in Latin American markets and received an undeclosed investment from Ripple in the fall of 2019. Since then, it has been in Ripple's liquidity corridor supporting its on-demand liquidity service. The largest amount among the aforementioned transfers was the move by South Korean BitHump exchange internally a staggering 200 million XRP. The second biggest amount of XRP, almost 135 million tokens, was shifted by Binance exchange Bittrex. Massive amounts of XRP being shifted and moved around behind the scenes. Everest.org, we're excited to partner with Bitso, the largest crypto exchange in Latin America, to give Mexico-based users the ability to convert CRDT plus XRP and other cryptocurrencies into Mexican peso. All roads lead to the bridge, the interoperable one, XRP. I thought I'd just give a quick uh, summary of Everest has, you can onboard yourself, web or mobile, right? You can EKYC, you can pull in dollars from your bank, right? Into Everest. We hold those uh, dollars on, if you will, the user's behalf. We then issue our credit token that comes with all the instructions of, hey, this should be turned into XRP or BTC or something like that. And the exchange rate for that should be this into MXN. We package all of that together and then send it over to your side of the fence. And that's where Bitso does its magic. XRP, the bridge currency, coming to a wallet near you. BlackRock is infiltrating the crypto space and we're all doing the wave of happiness. BitBoy Crypto is really at it today and explaining why this might not be so positive for crypto. To me, right now, everybody patting each other on the back saying, we did it, BlackRock's in crypto. No, that's low IQ. That's low ethics. That's low morality. And I won't stand for it. And, and, and I won't sit here ever and commend them and say, guys, now we got the next $10 trillion coming to crypto. No, I don't want your freaking money. I'd rather be poor than everybody lose all their rights. That's where things are going. Technocracy. Lord Vendetta says, hey, BitBoy Crypto, let me school you a bit about BlackRock. Here's proof that BlackRock was in crypto before you understand and believe in Ripple and XRP. In April 2019, BlackRock hired former Ripple executive Robbie M to lead its digital asset era. He also penned a paper outlining a methodology for valuing crypto assets in a podcast. In September that year, Mitchnick was referred to as the firm's blockchain lead and outlined precisely the same performance trade-offs of speed, scalability, privacy, and security. Quant Network, most big financial services institutions have a two to three year strategy to digitize every type of instrument, asset, stock, and security they have to benefit from tokenization and access to markets and clients, says our CEO. I don't have respect for the SEC Gov's current approach to crypto. And I also think we have a national interest in innovation in, um, in, in digital assets and digital money in the same way we had a national interest in the first wave of the internet, the internet of information. And at that point, the national interest was clearly recognized to be one of do no harm. And that was expressed by both Congress and a very enlightened administration that of all people Gary Gensler served in, that was the Clinton administration. And yet I do not see a do no harm regulatory response being put forward by the SEC right now. I see a, a, what I would call a much more uh, aggressive and a, a shut it down before it goes too far. Uh, approach. And I'm, I'm quite frankly disappointed. Now, I've got great respect for Gary Gensler uh, as an executive. We didn't overlap, but we know each other quite well. And during my time at the CFTC, I made sure that our lab CFTC kept him informed up at MIT of all of our of our work. And, and so I've got great respect for him, but I don't have respect for the SEC's current approach uh, to crypto. I think it is going to hold back and, 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 and stifle innovation in the United States. And I think in a time of competing global responses to crypto. I think that's a discipline. He also did his own analysis on XRP and declared XRP is not a security. 
Michael Branch, a recent report suggests that Ripple is eyeing growth through CBDCs, and this might provide a favorable standing with the governments. Crypto Eddie, David Schwartz on proof of work. Bitcoin miner fees are not a value, it's a tax. Sure, they're advancing. It has a high cost, and as I've said many times, it provides mediocre decentralization. That high cost is not just money, but it's also cost in the um, in, in environmental impact and energy consumption. A lot of people have pitched POW as for proof of work as providing an equal opportunity, but it just doesn't. It provides an advantage to whoever has the cheapest power and whoever has the best ASICs. And so it doesn't provide the type of decentralization that I think we'd all like to see. I think it's also important to remember that miners pay for power with the money generated by the ecosystem. So if you're mining Bitcoin, the money that you use to pay for energy isn't coming from the miners. That money is coming from the people who use the Bitcoin ecosystem. It's a tax. It's a form of residual friction. And I think uh, an analogy to think about is um, when you look at some blockchains, they measure the value that they're creating by the fees that they take in. So Ethereum takes in a lot of fees. Bitcoin takes in a lot of fees. And that tends to suggest to some people that those blockchains are particularly valuable. But that's residual friction. Residual friction. It's like the money that PayPal makes, right? PayPal reduces friction between buyers and sellers, but the money PayPal makes is the friction they didn't remove. If you're a buyer, any money that PayPal makes is money that you had to pay. And if you're a seller, any money that PayPal makes is money you didn't get. So if you think about fees as being good, they're actually a bad thing. They're a measure of friction still left in the system. And don't think that systems that have more residual friction are better. That's sort of the reverse of a sort of logical way to assess the value of the system. Banks in Ireland are shutting down and people can't get cash or access to their own money. Banks go down. Watch out for XRP to go up. Town and people are furious. There's nobody in the bank. People want help and need help. Elderly people, etc. I'm not going to put the people on camera so we can hear their voices. People, are you happy with the TSB service? No. no? What about you? No. They can't get their money. Are you happy with the service in here? No. no. no? Uh, are you happy with the service in here? Everybody is upstairs and there's nobody in the bank. BYOB, be your own bank. Get ready for the new financial system. All roads lead to the RippleNet XRP. Interoperability will be key. No upgrades needed. No middleman taking no fees. First, we had the Internet of Information. Now, welcome to the Internet of Value running on the XRP ledger. Load up while you still have some time. XRP, fire cell. I'll see you at the tip top. I am the XRP Bagman, the Moon Commander, currently up here on the mothership, stuffing some bags and enjoying the show. Appreciate you stopping by, tuning in, smashing those likes for some more. Moon O'Clock News. Hope y'all continue to stay extra, extra bullish out there. Continue holding those good vibes. Remember to sell the FUD, buy up that XRP. bag, and don't forget to spread that liquid love. Also, if you're new here, don't forget to drop a subscribe. Drop a comment down below. All the OGs, drop a comment down below. And drop an elbow on that like button. We'll catch you up top on the mothership for the moon party. BYOB. Peace out, crypto ghost. I'ma be gone. Air full of smoke like you just seen a ghost. Cruise on a boat and a whole nother coast. Doing our most, got you willing to go. While you was chilling, my bag hit the feeling. Now I'm feeling like I'm surveyed in the shade. Got my shades on, now I'm blocking the hate. Lady eating bags, we gon' be straight. Disappearing to a whole nother place. Got a Ferrari to race. All my jewelry in a safe. At the party up in space. Smoking bud, never listen to bud. Tells me never sell until it went up. Six figures ain't appealing enough. Seven, I'm feeling a million and up. Life changing, never felt so amazing.